Yes. I'm going to just spread that out. Oh, yeah, this is beautiful, isn't it? I'm going to fold it this way so they can see the corners. There we go. All right. Welcome, everyone. Here we are on Technique Tuesday, and we're starting our series of quick gifts to make. So today I want to show you how to do the wraparound, I'm going to call it binding, the wraparound binding using the cuddle fur and our beautiful, beautiful flannels. So I just, I like the look of it. I mean, easy would be to put both sides together and sew it together and flip it. But don't you feel like this just has a more luxurious look to it? So I want to show you first how to match the plaids. Then we're going to go and wrap around the binding. OK. Yeah, show them this corner here. Oh, yeah. Like so versus. that one is. It's, it's nice, but it's just not the same. Yeah, it's nice. So here, decide which one you like better. OK, so there's the corners. See? Hands down. Ha hands down. Oh, I'm going to wrap it around me. Yeah. Yeah, because I think you'd get a better idea of how nice this one is. So there. So the wrap around binding, yeah. I mean, that's fast and easy, and whoever gets it will love it. Now, notice too that we embroidered through all the layers, and we did snowflakes on this one. Hopefully, you can see it. Maybe if I go like that. You can see it. So there's a snowflake. So just here and there to hold it together. This is actually the wrong side. And here is the right side. So we just did some snowflakes here and there to hold it all together. You, re you really, so w we were in Pottery Barn and we saw these blankets. Now we went again, again this year and they're nice blankets are $179 to $229. And actually, we felt like our fur and our flannel was nicer. So so these are $300 blankets. So, But they are, If I, I know many of you have purchased the cuddle from us. And right, tell us, I mean, it's so soft and so luxurious. So, And it keeps you so warm. So these are wonderful, wonderful gifts to give. Okay, so first thing you have to do, now some of our flannels, you don't have to match the plaid, so because they're already 60 inch wide, but some of them are only 44, 45 inch wide, so you'll have to match the plaid. Now this one, this is my, I love this one. Um, this one only came in the 44 inch wide, so when you open it up, you're gonna unfold it, okay? And you're going to end up with two pieces. So what we gave you in your kit was two yards. So let's show you that. So it's two yards. Well, we'll see. Am I opening this up right? Maybe not. It's okay here. Oh, here we go. Okay, so here it is. So here's the fold. There's the salvage edge. Isn't this gorgeous? But so two yards at the 44 inch wide. I, I say 44 because there's always a little bit of a frayed edge here that you're going to cut off. Okay, and then you're going to get another piece that we cut for you so you don't end up, uh, you end up paying for three yards. Okay, but if you wanted to do this on your own and buy the yardage, you would have to buy four yards. So what we did is we took it and we cut another piece two yards long and then we cut it right on perfectly straight. So you will end up, so let's, let's even write down these numbers. So you are going to end up, where is my pen? Okay, so this is, uh, the fabric is 44 inches wide. This fabric, the second piece, is 22, or 22 and a half, right around there. We'll measure it. Okay, so yours is going to be, when it's done, and, and then it's 72 inches long. Both will end up 72 inches long. You're going to end up with 66 inches, once you sew those together, approximately 66 inches by 72, okay? Now your fur 
comes 59 inches wide sometimes it's 60 but most of the time it's about 59 inches wide by 72 all right you are going to need your fabric to be six inches smaller so we'll go over that when I go to my sample so but first I want to match the plaids okay so I've got I need to spread out I've got my pins handy here okay and I'm gonna take well there's the little piece okay so I'm just gonna leave that fuzzy edge in. Now let's take a look at it. Can we tell the difference between the right side and the wrong side? And usually with these flannels, they are reversible. It looks beautiful on that side. I'm looking at my salvage and they say whatever salvage looks more finished. So on this one, the salvage on the outside looks a little more finished. So that will be the right side. So I'm going to Throw that one back here, and I will open up my fabric. So I'm going to unfold it. So here's the 44 by 72, okay? And I think I'm going to bunch it up, otherwise it's going to fall off the table. Okay, and I want to match the plaid. So I am going to take this piece, and I want to match up the plaid. So I'm going to come over here. And, okay, this is the wrong side. I'm going to go from the other end. Now, remember, it's too big. You're, so if the plaid, you know, cuts off a little bit, you're going to be fine. Oh, but wouldn't you know? So this is Natalia cutting them. Look at how perfect she cut it. So it's going to match exactly. So here, so here is the one piece. We're going to take the other piece, lay it right on top. Now, usually I do take my pins. And I'll insert my pin, like there I am right at an intersection. Put the pin in the other side, come out. So I'm going back to high school, high school sewing where we learned how to match our plaids. And we never would have worn something that the plaids didn't match. Now today, they don't even care about the plaids matching, do they? I wonder if, you know, nicer stores, if they do have the plaids matching. I bet they do. Okay, so I'm just going to go here and there with a pin and take it in right on that line. Bring my pin right out again. Go here. Now there's another way to do this. You can use our pinning method, but you can also use are by Annie's tape. Here it is right here. We love it. It makes this, so imagine how much work I'd have to do. You saw how long it took me just to put in two pins. Let's take our by Annie's tape and see if that's faster. Okay, I'm gonna have, oops, see, it's really, really sticky. Okay, so I'm gonna lay out a little bit. Now you would usually spread this out on a big table so you won't struggle. But, okay, so I'm going to take the Biennese tape. So it's sticky on one side and it has paper on the other. And I'm going to lay the tape down. And I'm just going to do it a little bit at a time. Boy, we wish we would have had this when we were in high school. Okay, laying my tape down. I'll just do a little bit at a time. So I'll just snip off there. Okay, you just... Push it down and then you take and you peel off the paper. And so you, no need to iron it. There it is. So I'll peel off a little bit and show you. So see, it's sticky. So this is going to make it so much easier. Okay. So here we will take our plaid and we'll match it up. I may peek out a peek underneath and make sure it's matching. If you feel safer, you could put a pin in here and there, but let's take a look. So I'll flip it open. I'm happy. Look at this. Look at how much easier it is with the tape. So we're going to keep going. 
and do the whole length. Okay, I'm gonna straighten it up a little bit. So I'm gonna take my Biani's tape. So we love this. Most of the tape, so the Steam Seam 2, well the Steam Seam 2 is sticky on both sides, but it isn't as sticky as this Biani's. And also what I like about this is that um, it's very, very narrow. So I don't have to worry about sewing through it. I'm just putting it somewhere where I'm not gonna sew. So I'm gonna stick that one down and do another length. So much faster. Snip it off. Maybe I'll take it just a little farther. Cut and keep going. Oh, I, I bet that won't matter, but I was kind of lining up my tape. Oh, well here, it already, it already peeled off, so I'm okay. So I'll get that paper, take it off, line up. And now remember what's nice about this, if you peek at it and it's not matching up exactly, you just pull on it and reposition it. So I think we're perfect. I can see just right here that it's going to be perfect. I love these colors. So this is a brand new Robert Kaufman plaid. And you know I've been saying all year how much I love teal, teal and gray. I just love it. So. Teal and charcoal gray, would you call that? Yeah, yeah. teal and charcoal gray, yes. Yes, so it's, it's kind of, oh no, no, on that. I'm looking up here at the camera, it's brighter. The, the picture that I see on your screen is, is per, the perfect color. It's exactly the color it is. So on this camera that I'm looking at, it's a little brighter, but what you're seeing is the exact color. So now are you broadcasting on YouTube? Yes. Okay. Are. So what do we need everybody to do? We're getting, everybody needs to go to our YouTube channel. And subscribe. subscribe to Gloria Horn Sewing Videos. And it's then we free. need them to, it's free, it's free. And we need everyone to watch the videos. Just let it run, right? Because they determine who gets to sell on YouTube by the number of hours watched, right? right. So just let it run. <laughs> That would help us, and then we'll be able to... Background noise. Or hmm? Don't you turn the TV on, it's just background noise. Right, background noise. That's what yes. somebody was saying yeah. to me earlier today, that um, uh, her husband was remarking to her that, you know what, he, she hears my voice more than she hears his voice. And she just has it on. She said it's just kind of soothing to listen and tune in. So that would help us. You have to watch on YouTube, though, right? Because we have to... Uh, Add up those hours on YouTube. Maybe I should peek. I feel like it's so perfect though. Yes, it's perfect. Oh no, maybe not, maybe not. I'm off a little bit. Starting right here, I went off a little bit. So I'm gonna peel it up and try again. I was hurrying too much. It doesn't take very much time though. So there. We do not pre-wash no. anything and, ever. And we asked them at uh, Robert Kaufman, they said they pre-shrink it. Yeah. They pre-shrink it, same thing. Moda says they pre-shrink it. So all of the quality cottons, um, the companies are very aware that we don't want it to shrink. Now, if you buy you know, I'm, I'm going to say at, at one of the big box stores, you, you have to, I would pre-shrink that. But what, what I'm hearing, how people pre-shrink it. So how we used to do it is we would put it in the dryer with a wet towel and just let it run so that I think that moisture makes it, makes it uh, shrink. Uh, and then you won't, oh, I, look at this, it's sticking to me. I don't know what I'm doing here. I got it sticking everywhere. There we go. But then I even saw someone, and it was uh, somebody like very well-known quilter, and she said she just lays it on her ironing board and she steams it really good. And she feels that's enough to pre-shrink it. So to double check. 
Now the batting, if you, you know, we, we're, we used to like the 100% cotton, but now we really like the uh, batting that has the, that, the fusible batting, which that is 80-20. And from what I hear, the uh, batting will not shrink. And so that's what makes a lot of the quilts shrink. It's because the batting inside the quilt has sh shrunk. So if you use the 80-20, it has the scrim in it and it is less likely to shrink. Or it won't shrink near as much as the 100% cotton. Okay, doing good, I think. And then we're going to go over to the sewing machine. We have the digital dual feed in. Now, Steve, where would you set the digital dual feed for this one? Like when we Doing sew. Doing the plants like that? Yeah. Zero. Just zero. Yep. zero. And we'll just let it that. feed. Yep. Okay. So I almost just have about six more inches to go. So I, uh, Tiffany today had a great show, right? And. Um, Tomorrow at 3 is Kathy with Kimberbell, but Kathy is starting to show other embroidery designs. So even if you, you know, let's say you don't like Kimberbell or uh, you want to see some new things, make sure you tune in at 3 o'clock for Kathy. Oh, wait a minute. What time is she going on or is she going on tomorrow? She is. She is. Yep. At 3? She better go on early. It's the day before Thanksgiving. One. Let's shoot for one. We'll shoot for one. Yep. So one o'clock tomorrow. She's got to go home and uh, what and stuff her turkey. Stuff her turkey. Thaw her turkey. So your turkey should be thawed by now. Yes, you can definitely use this with when you're sewing serger seams with yes. this double sided tape. Mm -hmm. yep. Definitely. Okay, so I'm looking good. Let me take a peek, and I'm gonna I think still. I'm just going to peel up and just do it one more time. I think I pull, pulled on it a little. So see, just like that. And It's so much yeah. better than pinning. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine how long this would take me? We love this. So um, by Annie, she uses it to put in her zippers, to position her zippers and hold them in place. So it's much better than the pinning and the clipping. Okay, then we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and I've got the digital dual feed in. Okay. Okay, now I have no idea how we set it the last time. So I'm gonna wake up my machine. All right, we've got the dual feed in. I like 1-03. Oh, no, we can do that, yeah, let's yeah. do it, let's okay. do it, sorry. So, you tell us where yeah. to put it. Yeah, that's about. That's, that's about good. Yep. Okay. So I I like the stitch 103. Joni likes 104. It's just whatever one you like. Okay. Yeah, right. But oh, now perfect. let's yeah. check our awesome. dual feed settings. So we're going to go up to settings. That's the piece of paper at the top, and we have to find the page. So this is step one. We're, we've got we've got 12 pages of setting. Here we are. Dual feed adjustment. Look at this. Last time we used it, we were plus 04. So we want to be at zero, which is the default. So zero and OK. Let's also show them to make sure their automatic fabric sensor system oh, is turned yes. on. So, it it right. isn't turned on when you first get your machine. It's, it's turned right. off. So. OK, so we're going to go to the settings page. Here it is. Automatic fabric sensor system. Make sure that is turned on. The machine will sense how thick your fabric is and it will adjust automatically. So make sure that's turned on and we'll say OK. So it's even on when you go to embroider. And if you've ever noticed that your machine kind of, the presser foot taps down and then goes up and that's it testing the thickness of the fabric before you start to embroider. Now I'm going to just sew on this gray line. I think a little bit to the left of it. And so I'm getting a wider seam allowance, but I don't, I, I have plenty width. I'm gonna have to trim it anyhow, but I'll just start to sew. Okay, and I have it set up to go in reverse. Now, let's see, stitch length. I didn't look at that. So we have the stitch length at 2.5. I think that's good, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so stitch length at 2.5. We've got it zero. It just means that 
the presser foot, when you're at zero, see there's a, a belt right behind your needle bar. There's a belt and it's going to evenly feed both layers of fabric. So if you don't use the digital dual feed, your presser foot might push on the fabric and create a bubble and then your plaid might go off. So I'm just following that line. And I'll just iron it to one side. I have a, a 2.5 stitch length. I'm using polyester thread. I want something really strong. So get it rearranged here. There we go. This fabric is so nice. I know people have been posting pictures of their uh, flannel and fur uh, throws. And um, thank you so much for posting the pictures. Everyone's really enjoying it. So we love these. So we all like, like if I sit down on, in my comfy chair, especially in January, I want, I want a blanket around me. And I just want something, I like the throw size. So I'll show you how we figure out how big we want the fabric. I don't trim the fur, I leave it the length that it comes. So we're using the compact digital dual feed with just the general purpose universal um, sole or foot right. on this one. And when you're working with like bigger projects like this, when you have this extra fabric, um, it's sometimes helpful to, to take off the embroidery unit and then we put the extension table on right. so you have this platform to sew with. It keeps things from falling. You notice when you're sewing, if anything's pulling or falling, it just, it fights you and you don't want to yeah. fight it. So the extension table just adds that platform. And you don't have that bump. Yeah. You don't have the bump of the embroidery unit. Okay, just a little bit more. Oh, I feel Can a we bubble. sell on YouTube or not yet, not, PJ? Not, not yet. yet. We need them to tune in. Just let it run. So what what do we need to do, PJ? Um, we've already we already made it past 500 subscribers, but we need uh, a certain number of hours watched, and it's like in the millions. Oh, millions of hours watched. Okay, tell all your Binge friends. Binge watch us. Binge watch us. Binge watch us. <laughs> yes. yes. Marathon. All right. Invite all, we... invite all your sewing friends over. Make your family watch it for the holidays. <laughs> yes. No, don't turn on the Hallmark movies. Nope. No. Mm -mm. Turn on. Sewing one on one. Sewing one on one. Yes. Tell yes. them we have the best show to watch. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So it's done. And then let's take a look. I'm a little worried because I was in a hurry. No. Look at how nice that looks. So so see, I have a little extra. But we're going to be trimming anyhow. Don't you love this color? I love this one. I love the Christmas ones, but I really, like, I'm always thinking some one that I could um, use after Christmas and all year round. Ooh, I love this. Okay, so you're, I'm going to get my piece of paper out because I want to show you how we figure out. Okay, so you're, and what do I do with my pen right here? So you're, Cuddle is 59 by 72, okay? I like it to wrap around three inches. I just like the look of it. I like the three inches. You can decide. If you say, no, I like two and a half, I like two, whatever you like. But I really, I just, I just like that two, three inches. So whatever you like, okay? Then you are going to take six inches off. So the cuddle is 59 by 72. So you have to make sure that this is, so it's going to be, well, well, you better double check us because we might have given you more. And you see on this end, it hangs off a little bit. So might need to double check us. But this, you're going to want your, this fabric. So we sent you 72. Okay, but you need to take six inches off. You need to make this fabric six inches smaller. And I have a little demo to show you with it. So you're gonna make this one 66 inches wide, because that is six inches less than 72. 
and then the width of your cuddle is 59 and you're going to cut your fabric 53. Now you started out with 44 and we gave you another 22 so you're going to be cutting off now I have to think a second so 53 so 44 it so you you'll have 66 inches okay you, so you'll have 66 and you'll want to cut that down to 53 all right so you have 66 so that's 13 so you're gonna have 13 inches so it would be enough to make a scarf out of this so you'll you'll have 13 inches by the entire length by two yards so you'll have enough to make a scarf left over so okay so now I have a, a small piece just so you know it's just more manageable okay so I have a piece so I have my cuddle okay and I decided that I wanted this one with this light gray and so my cuddle I measured it and it is 39 inches by 19 and a half. So same thing here. I need to make my fabric six inches narrower. So I have the three inches on each side. Okay. And then, oh, it looks like I have more than three, doesn't it? Maybe we'll wrap this one out around a little farther. So, oops. Okay. So this one Okay, I have 19 and a half, so I should have made this minus six, 13 and a half. So I am 13 and a half. Am I adding right? Yes, yeah, six inches. So that, oh, there it is, three and, and this side. Okay, it's, it looked bigger than three to me, she doesn't it? Three inches all the way around. All the way around, it, right. It, it, someone just asked if we're going to uh, list the, uh, the, the measurements or something, but it's just, just remember, it's three inches on each side or six inches total or any side but three inches right. all the way around and this. and so I do I did figure it out so you are going to cut your fabric uh, let's see so you're you're at 60 so you're going to cut your 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 cuddle is going to be 59 by 72 okay 59 by 72 you don't have to cut that at all but to, you need to cut this down to six inches left. So 59 minus six is 53 wide by 66 long. So that's what you'll need to cut this down to and cut it right on a plaid because you want that, those plaids to be nice and straight. Okay, so this one, I have 19 and a half by 39. So I, I have this uh, dimension at 13 and a half, but look at this, I'm too long on this end. So I need to measure, and I want this to be 33. So I take my measuring tape and measure, and 33 is on this white line right here. So the white line right there, and I'm gonna take my scissors and cut right on that line to make it the right length. And this is just, you know, I'm not really making anything in particular. I just, I got a small piece so I, it would be easy for me to demonstrate it. Okay. Now, so then you are going to position that. And I want to make sure it's three inches all the way around. That doesn't it look, it just doesn't look right, does it? Okay, let me, can you hand, I dropped my measuring tape. Okay, so there we go. So I wanted three inches. So let's measure my length. Maybe I didn't measure it right. So here, 37. I thought it was 39. So this, this piece of fabric is 37. So my length needs to be six inches less. So I need to be at 31. Okay, 31 for my length of my flannel. So my plaid flannel. So come back here and measure. And 31 is almost halfway down. And remember, all of these projects are really forgiving. Let me double check. I kind of looked real quick and I turned away. So there. So there's 31. So I'll go about right here. And I'm just, if, 
if you cut crooked, it's not going to matter because remember, we are going to turn this over the edge. So don't worry about cutting crooked. Okay. There. So now 31. So it's just you want your flannel to be six inches shorter. So I'm going to look here and I want to make sure that I am pinning this end three inches. So I'm going to reposition this and measure my three inches. I want three inches. That's because I want to wrap around three inches. If you decide you only want two, then you'll, you'll change those dimensions. I'm almost at three there. A little bit more. Okay, so now I'm at three and then I like to take my curved safety pins. I love this set because there's so many different sizes in it and, and they're all like big. So they're curved so they're easier to pin. So I like to pin it and I'm going to pin it far away from where I'm going to. Oh, I didn't mention, I didn't measure this distance. So let's do that first before we start our pinning. So here, three inches, no. This side, a little more than three. So I'm just going to slide it this way a little bit and then double check that dimension again. So here, no, I must have moved it a little bit more. Okay, so three inches, I'm good there. Three inches here, I am good. And up here, three inches. So let me see, check here. Okay, so this one's a little more than three. Now you don't have to be this exact. Remember the fur will cover up every mistake. Okay, so I'm going to double check three, a little bit more this way. Okay, three and three. Okay, let's get a pin in there. But see, I'm going to pin far away from where I'm going to sew. So I get a pin in. Get another one. So this is my favorite set of the safety pins because they have the curve and because there's so many different sizes. So you really need these. Okay, let's check. I put a pin in before I even checked and I can see I'm a little bit crooked. I better take that out and double check. Okay, so here it's a little more than three. I'm going to pull it this way a little bit. Okay, go here. Three. Okay, I can put a pin in. And we'll just check that all the way down and put pins in as we go. Okay, check it again. Sorry. Oops, wrong end. There, pull it this way a little bit, smooth it. There, I'm looking good. I'm, I'm a hair off, but I know it's not going to matter. These are the really big ones. So it doesn't really matter what size you use. I uh, purchased some safety pins and I because they were a really good deal. And they were so rough, I couldn't hardly pin. I it wouldn't. So these are from Dritz. So they know we're using them to sew. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. Okay, and we'll check it down here. And if, as long as I'm in the ballpark pretty close, I'll go ahead. So this has to be pulled down this way, but here. Maybe I'll check it here. So it's a little bit. So go here, double check. I think I'm good. Okay, let's get a couple more <clears throat> pins in. Okay. There. So like I said, this says it has small pins big ones. So here. Just a pin here and there so it won't 
shift and also keep your safety pins away from where you're going to sew because if I pin right here and I do my mitered corner, okay, and you forget and you leave that pin in, which is what I did do on my arse. I left a pin in. So if you feel, and you know, I'm always in a hurry, but I was fooling around with it and I really, yeah, there's a safety pin in this corner. So that's why I keep warning you to make sure you get your safety pin out. I think there's three in here. Yeah. We felt <laughs> three. Our... We were in a hurry. We were in a hurry. See, even with a safety pin in, still give us a gift. Yeah, yeah, still give it as a gift. It's a safety pin. At least it isn't a straight pin. Yeah. How many of us have left a straight pin in? Me. Uh, Sharon had mentioned about the, um, the, the cuddle scarves. If you go to Google and just type in um, Shannon Fabrics Infinity Scarf, uh, a, a, one of the selections will be a, a free tutorial video yes. of Teresa Coates. Yes, we um, love her. Demonstrating how, to, so how to do the, uh, the Infinity Scarfs with yes. this. Uh, yep. No, we we can demo that again. Yeah, for we can sure. Go, we we, we want to do like you never know. We we may go on three times a week. I mean, it is crunch time for quick gifts to make. So um, three times a day. Two three times a day. Is that yeah. what you meant? Yeah, three, three a day. Three a day. Yeah, three. Yeah. I, yeah, but I mean for the quick gifts Tri to make. Oh yeah. We might add on three every week Be until. Play. Yes. There. Oh, see that one's whoop danger danger zone. Pull your pin away. Okay, so the next thing, so next thing we're going to do is mark our miter. Now, what I really love about this cuddle is that I don't have to turn it under first. So that's what we do with the quilts. We turn it under and under again. With the cuddle, you don't have to. They don't fray. They don't fray. So, and the fur covers up your stitches. So you're just going to turn it once. So doing the miter is so much easier. So what we're gonna do is I have my quick and easy mitered binding tool. And I like using this because, you know, I tried to do it without it. I thought, oh, I can figure this out, but I didn't have the right angle. And this tool helps you stay in the right angle. So I'm gonna open it up and you wanna take the paper off. So it's bright green and you can't see through it. So you wanna take the paper off there, get it started. There's, it's starting. There. Okay, and the paper comes off. She even put on there, please remove protective brown paper. And I'm sure she saw lots of our customers working with it with the brown paper still on. Okay, so I'm going to take, so see, it has lines on it. So I'm going to line up these lines with the edge of my fabric. Okay, so there's the lines with the edge of the fabric. Now I need to mark that line, okay? So I brought over, I have a chalk pencil. How do we get like right there? Oh, yeah, I yep. can move this out of the way. So see, here's the lines, okay? And I, I have my chalk pencil. You probably use a, 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 felt, a felt friction pen too. So, but I, <laughs> sorry, I was just getting that tightened there. Oh, sorry, I'll just straighten you out. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, that's like good. Upside down if it's yeah, oh, okay. if it's that's too wonderful. Too. Okay. So I'm gonna take my chalk and I'm just gonna extend that line. Now here I'll get the first of it going. And if you wanna be really exact, okay. I'm going to just extend it here. So hopefully you can see it. I also, you know, sometimes the fur on the back, you can't see anything. So I've seen people use a felt tip pen to do the marking line. We'll do both. See which one we see better. So, oh, I don't see the black at all. It's just blending in. So I'll get my chalk pencil. So, and, and I also think the uh, felt tip. Uh, friction pens are really good. Remember, it's on the inside. No one's going to see it. It doesn't have to be a marking pencil. You're not going to see these lines after you sew. Okay, so there we go. Now we are going to take our pins. Here's our pins, which 
what did she call this little thing for our pins? Pin alert. Pin alert. So mm -hmm. like a caution. Okay. Now, see, normally I do put a pin right up to here. But see, since I left my pin in, I don't want to do that. So what I want to do is I want to fold this. <laughs> I want to fold this right at that corner to this corner. Okay. Fold it in half, keeping all the layers together. You know what? I need a pin. We're just, you're going to have to tell me if I left my pin in. We're going to have to get that out because I, I need it to hold all the layers. So I'm going to fold it in half and I've got my chalk line. Hopefully you can see it. So I've got my chalk line. Now see, I'm not folded right at the corner. So I'm going to fold right at the corner. I'm going to line up the edge of my cuddle. Okay, then I'm going to double check. I'm going to take a pin here. Make sure that it comes out. Oh, I'm off just a little bit. So I'm going to just slide this over a little bit. Okay, so I'm overlapping a little bit. You want the edges of the fabric to match and you want it folded at this corner and right on that corner. So let's try again. Get another pin. So there. Now I'm on the white line. Now I want to tell you, it's very forgiving. So I was always really, really careful to do it exactly right. But if, if you're not exact, you don't have to worry. Oh, my chalk line is disappearing. You know what? I think I need, do, do we have a felt here. tip? I don't know whether we do. I'll find a little. So I'm brushing it off as I go. This is no good. So I could just do it darker. Because guess what, Steve? I think we couldn't find friction pens oh. when we were. Uh, so that no, Can that we won't use work. These to find it? The yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you have, Steve? The OptiGrab. <laughs> Remember our OptiGrabs. Please oh, look. Try that pen. I bet that pen will work. That pen might work. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me, let me get my chalk on. I I might just not have put the pen in real deep or real dark. Okay. So there, line it up again. I don't know why I didn't think of the friction pen. Really, any marker. I thought of the black, but the black is just bl blending in. Now we're gonna, oh, there we go. So what do you think, green? Let's try this. So the, where'd you find those so uh, quick? In my desk drawer. Okay. There, I'm seeing it a little better. You really got to mark it. Oh, look at, and this is making my felt tip fuzzy. So that's just normal. Okay, so there I'm, I'm thinking I can see. I better double check. I'm gonna just use a regular pen. Okay. No, nothing wants to do it. I have a permanent ink marker. I have a bigger sharpener. Let's see. The green. I can see it, but I'm thinking they can't see it. You can see it? Okay. Look at I think this is helping me. I can see. Okay, they can see it. Okay, good. Okay, because I've kind of made an indentation. Okay, so we're going to do again. So we're going to fold in half or fold at the point. We're going to make sure that okay, the okay. edges of the cuddle meet each other and make sure that it's folded at the corner. Okay. okay. Then I'm going to take a pin, bring it through this side. Is it matching up? No. So I'm going to just take my pin out and pin, come in through the other side of the line and pin this at the line. Okay. And then... We're doing good, Steve. Don't worry. He doesn't worry. And everyone told us, you know, you're going YouTube. Don't edit. Don't, don't edit out your mistakes. They help us. So we're going to do a, another corner. Maybe I'll do the opposite corner. Two opposite corners might be easier for me. Okay, so here, again, I'm going to lay this down. So normally when we use the mitered uh, binding tool, on our quilts, we turn under first and we turn again. So on the cuddle, it is so much easier. 
And Teresa from Shannon Fabrics, this is how she demos it too. So I, I double checked. I thought maybe she had a easier way. She did not use a mitered binding tool. We have to tell her about that mitered binding tool because if you don't have the mitered binding tool, you, you, if you get the angle wrong, you're not going to get a nice miter. So it's really nice to have that. Which, what cut are you using on the back there? What this that one, one that is, is, I think, Silver Fox. Silver Fox, okay. But there's a color I like better than like this better? with okay. this. So we'll show you all the different cuddles. So there, there's more than one choice. What we used on this one was the Rabbit Nine Iron. And I like that one better. Do you, Steve? It's darker. I kind of like that better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like the dark. Yes. So on the on the um, teal plaid, I like that one too. Okay, so we're doing good. Okay, I don't have a pin. Okay, now remember, I'm getting worried because I left. Make sure I get that pin out of there before I do my final stitching. So we'll just, I'm going to put a pin in. Okay, fold it right at the point, right at this point. Take it and make sure that your edges of your cuddle are matching so you don't want it overlapping because then it's, it's just not going to look good because remember you're not turning it under first. Okay, so I'm good there. Okay, now it's time to pin. So I'll take a pin, put it in on this side. Oh, close but not good. Go here. Come out again on my marking line, go the inside. So that is making everything line up. Okay, so I'm not going to be sewing through my flannel. So I really don't even need my flannel to be attached. There, now, see, now it's lining up. So start with a pin on this end, and that makes the whole line line up. Should I do all four or just two? All, all four, because they, they might want to see me do it again. We need to see it four times. Four times. Yes. We need to see it four times. Right. We do. Okay. And, you know, every time I go to do it, if I haven't done it for a while, I'll, um, I'll review our video or I'll go to Shannon Fabrics' website and I review their video. So here again, I've got the mindered binding tool. Okay, line it up. Now look at, I cut a little crooked, but I'm just kind of eye judging it. This is going to get covered, so don't worry about that. Okay, just kind of eye judge it and say, well, if I had sewn straight, the edge would have been about right there. And then I'll take my, the green was showing up, I'll try the pink. Okay, and you know that's what there's, homemade gifts are the best. Because really, in this day and age, isn't it that, like, if you want something, you save for it and you buy it yourself? So, and who wouldn't like a blanket? Oh, the pink is really showing up good. There. I'll extend it here. Just lining it up, extending it to the edge, and drawing it to the edge. Just slide it up. Okay, now I'll take my pin and pin to the corner. And you're all going to help me remember to get those pins out of there. So I'm going to fold it, and I'll lay it down, and I want to make sure that the edge of the cuddle matches. I don't want to be like that. That's not going to look good. I want it right on top of this edge. And as you pin it, it'll kind of fall into place. So there, put my pin in on this side. Let's check the other side. Oh, right on. Okay, so that's right on the line. So I'm going to bring it back in on this side. And there, it, it lined right up that time. So as you do them, it, it gets easier and easier. Okay, so see, I'm all lumping up because I've got this one already pinned. 
So it might be good to sew two and two. Now I'm a little worried because look at how this one is a little longer than the other one. I better repin that. I thought I was doing good, but okay. So we'll go again there and go in this side. Make sure it's good on that side. Uh, it's good. It's good. So I'll take this up and I'll pin the next one and it should just match up. We'll see. So there. It's, it's just a hair off. And remember, you're going to be sewing on the bias. So uh, when you're using your fabric or the cuddle, it's the, you're sewing kind of with the stretch. Now look at this. So I'm okay here. I want to make sure here I'm okay. Make sure. Because look at up here. I better repin. I better look at it again. Okay, there. Fold it on the point. There. Put the pin in. I'm good there. Making sure the edge, so my my two cut edges are matching up just right. I'll put another pin in. Okay, one more to pin. Okay, so that's what made me worry is that um, it, it just didn't look like it was matching up. I think I'm going to put another pin in down here to make sure that it doesn't shift at all as I'm sewing. So I want to make sure that those raw edges of the, the cut edges of the cuddle are laying one on top of the other. I don't want that to shift. Let's take a look at this one, make sure we're okay. And I'm going to put another pin in. So I'm good there. One more to pin, but I'm going to put an extra pin in each corner just to make sure that I don't sh make it shift. So there. Okay, one more corner. Let's see. Here it is, right here. Okay, we'll lay that flat, as flat as we can. Smooth it. We've got our pins in to help us. I'll get my quick and easy mitered binding tool. Line that up like that. So the lines, so this is the diagonal line is right at the point. And then I'll draw I think we're heading into a cold spell here, aren't we? So, but they're saying for Thanksgiving weekend, very, very little rain. So we've had an all day rain here. So I think, okay. There, so I can really see the line. So it seemed like the pink felt tip friction pen it's working the best for me. I'm going to take a pin and pin it at the diagonal. I'm going to go in this direction because that will make it easier for me to pull it out. Okay, then I'm going to fold right here, right at the point here, lining up the point here, lay it on the table, and make sure that my cut edges of my cuddle are matching up. So no good there. So Gloria had a question. She said, Should, shouldn't it be right sides together? And we, they are right sides together. It is right sides together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So take a look. That's the fur is the right side. Yes. Because we're going to sew from this side and then it'll flip. Right. Yeah. It's like you're putting a dart in it almost. Okay. So there. Now, am I matching up my edge here? There. I'm looking good there. So I'll put my pin in. I'm on the pink line. Bring it through on the pink. I'm looking good. If you're a hair off, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. It will matter if you're off here. So that's why I like to put a second pin 
to make sure that when I'm laying it out, I don't pull on it. Okay, so I'm good there. Good at the point there. All right, one more pin, and we're going to go over to the sewing machine. So here I'm going to bring it in the pink line. Shift a little bit over. There, we're good. Bring it up through on the back, through the pink line, and there, I'm doing good. Okay, we're ready to go to the sewing machine. I'm going to bring my little caution, my caution, or what do they call this? It's a pin, pin alert. Pin alert, yes. Okay, all right. I'm going to wake up my machine. And I still have the digital dual feed in. Oh, I bumped the camera. I'm okay. Yep. So I still have it um, at 2.5 stitch length. I like 103. I like having the pivot function on. I like it to stop with my needle down in. I like it when I uh, press the reverse button that it ties a knot and cuts automatically. So I have all of those features selected. So there's, those buttons are all blue. Okay, now I'm gonna swing in front of the machine. And so, okay. So here, it definitely makes it easier having that second pin. I am feeling like a little bump here. So I wanna lay it out, make sure it's all laying flat. There, that's feeling better, no bumps. Okay, now I'm always worried about hitting a pin, so I like to pull my pin out a little bit. Now I have my machine set so that it will automatically lower my foot when I start to sew. So normally I would lower it, so there it's going in reverse, now it's coming forward. I sewed a few stitches, so I'll take the pin out and just sew right down that pink line. Pull my pin out a little bit. I don't want to hit the pin. Okay. My note. There. I'll take it all the way out and sew the rest of the way. I sew just one stitch off the edge. Then I press my reverse button and the machine will automatically go in reverse. Three stitches. Forward again. Three stitches. And cut my cut my thread and raise my foot. Okay, so I can take that one out. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So I am starting at, at the fold. Okay, I've got my pins in, so I'm good. Okay, I'm just gonna pull my pin out just a little bit so I don't hit the pin and just start to sew. And again, it is going to sew three stitches forward then three stitches back, and then start forward again. I'm just gonna sew right on that line. Okay, I'm just gonna go part way out. I don't want it to shift, so I didn't pull my pin. Now I can go all the way out. And I'm still going right down the line. So one stitch off the edge, press my reverse button. Because I press the button on the screen to automatically tie a knot, I just wait. I don't even have to press my foot control. It will, it will uh, sew and then tie a knot, then cut my thread and lift. Okay, let's see here. Oh, it did that one. Okay. Can you show us where that um, setting is for the, to tie the knot? To the tie the knot? Screen? Okay, the right here on the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here I'll turn them all off. Turn them all off. Okay, so the first one, I want it to automatically tie a knot, so I'm gonna press that one. I want it to cut, I want it to tie a knot, then cut my thread and lift my foot. So I'm gonna press that one. I like my needle stopping down in. You know, a lot of garment sewers like the needle to stop out, so you would press that button. Now see, it's gonna, it's gonna show you an arrow on the foot. Now here, so it's showing you a picture on your foot of your needle um, stopping down in. Now I like pivot function which means that when I stop with my needle down in the foot raises slightly so I can easily turn, I can easily readjust my fabric so I like all of those on. Okay so I do have just the two and a half stitch length so I'm just using the default settings. 
I like stitch 103 because I like a really strong knot. I feel like the knot in place isn't as strong. So I like the knot that goes in reverse. So 103 is your needle is in center position and it will tie a knot by going forward, reverse, forward. So a nice strong knot. Okay. So here I'm just going to position. Now see my pins right there. That could give me trouble. I could hit my pin and dull my needle. If you hit a pin, you have dulled your needle. There's no hope. Just Okay. So there it's going in reverse. Now it's going forward again. I'll slide that one out. And there. I have all kinds. That's the one I couldn't figure out what what um what pen to use. So there, just so a little bit more. Yeah. Too bad I didn't have the whole thing so ready to go because then I would have had a Christmas present ready to go. So press there, two, I'm one stitch off the two, edge, eight, press the reverse three, button, it sews. See, I'm not touching right, a thing. You. My feet are not on the foot control. It tied a knot and cut my thread and lift the foot. So one more to do right here. And there. And we have so many gorgeous cuddle fabrics. We have so cut to size. That's what we like. You don't want to be cutting it. At least I don't. And um, and so it's really nice that they um, Shannon Fabrics cuts it for us. So there. So I just started. It I it automatically tied a knot. I'm just going to pull my pin out. And so right down the pink line till I get to the pin, I want to take a look at it, make sure everything's laying flat, make sure the edges are meeting. Okay, so I'm just going to slide my pin out a little bit and keep going. I love it when you post your projects on our Gloria Horn Sewing Studio group page on Facebook. It's absolutely wonderful. When I can't sleep at night, that's where I go and I look at all of your projects and you inspire us to keep going. Okay, now I'm going to go over the table because we are going to cut uh, the fabric and we're going to pin some more. Okay, so go to the table. Now, and so I don't want to cut too close. I feel like this cuddle is very bulky. So I don't want to cut quarter inch because then the seam allowance will go to one side. So I'm cutting like a good half inch. Okay, then take my pins out. I'll get my little pin alert. Okay, and then that will flip. And I should have my turning tool here, but I also want that seam allowance open. It almost naturally went open. Look at how good this is going to look. Okay, let's do the next one. Okay, so do I have, I still have a pin in there. Okay, so we, we don't, I don't want to move anything yet. Although you, you end up tucking it in. Okay, so here I still have this pin. So I'll take that one out. I'm going to trim, leaving about a half inch. Because I want it to open up so there's less bulk. I don't want it to go to one side. See how it almost automatically opens up. So go there. Okay. So let's let's work with this end. Let's get those pins out. So <laughs> did you say we had three pins left in? Is that what we figured? I think so. We were yeah. Right, yeah. We were in a hurry that day. Okay, so now I would use my point turner. Let me see if we put it back where, oh, here, here's one. Okay. All right, we love our RNK point turner. OESD also makes one. We carry that one too. Okay, this is looking good. Let's get the point out here. So imagine this is a whole quilt and that's why I really think it looks nice. Okay, so here, We'll just put, I'll just put a couple pins. These pins will be on the outside, so we'll find them later. Have you ever made, I, I remember making a garment and finding, wearing it and finding a pin in the hem. There, I got, okay. So 
here. And we'll measure that as we go, too. Okay, so let's go down to the other end and do these two corners. So first we're going to trim it, leaving about a half inch. Flip it. Use our, make sure that seam allowance, see that one didn't open. Let's just open it with our fingers. Put it in. Okay, and my point turner. Let's just make sure we're poked out. It was pretty good on its own, making sure that my seam allowance, see I've, I have safety pins under there, so I wanna make sure I get those out, but I think it'll be easier to work with once they're all, all the corners are turned. So go there with the half inch. Now I'm not finding any bulk, so normally we would trim this a little more, but you know, you could do that if you want and there'll be less bulk, but the, you, you really don't notice any bulk, I think, because there's so much fur. So there. Who would think we would love making things with this fake fur, but we love it. We absolutely love it. They turn out so nice and who wouldn't want a cuddly blanket? And you know, we, are, we always say, we have, we have a pottery barn about a mile from here. And, um, and we walk in their store and their displays are so beautiful and we want our house to look like pottery barn. The reason why I want to look like pottery barn, I mean, I love the, the um, furniture from our era, but the kids, they don't care to have real quality uh, furniture. And so I, I want my house so that my kids, when they walk in, they go, wow, this is nice here. I'm going to come visit all the time. So, <laughs> yes. Okay, so I'm just double checking that I've got the three inches. There, laying flat. Let's check for, there's a safety pin. And really, we could just keep using the safety pins. Oh, there's a pin in here. There's a pin right here. So go in and get the pin. So feel around for pins before you go to sew. Okay. Get a safety pin in there. Okay. Smooth it. Double check that you've got the three. Maybe just a little more. And you can also use the plaid to help you. So remember, you cut on the plaid. So I think I'm pinning a little too much on this one. But right there looks good. There. See, this is when you need the longer safety pins. Make sure my, nope, there's a pin. Okay, we'll get a longer one. So they're, they have all different sizes in there. People are saying that pets love the... Uh, the cuddle. The minky. Do they? Your dogs My will love it. Love PJ, I, PJ has two dogs. Steve has one dog, but you're always watching somebody I, else's I dog. two at the moment. You have two at the moment. Yes. Yes. And My sister and I watch each other's dogs. Dogs. Uh-huh. So. That's nice. You can go places. Okay. Get another one. Feel for pins. Don't forget. I would have to on that other cuddle blanket. It's a safety pin, so I'm not too worried. But I would have to um, open up the seam and re-sew it. Okay, so every once in a while I'm measuring to make sure I have the three inches. But you can kind of eye judge it. You can follow the plaid and know that you've got it. Okay, take this one out because, okay. There, okay, make sure I don't feel a pin. See, I'm being extra careful because I left three pins in. Okay, there. So you buy a, or it's, it's actually three yards of flannel 
um, the 60 inch wide. I'll show you which ones you don't have to sew because we do have, they make very few in 60 inch wide. I wish they would make more. I don't think the people at Robert Kaufman knew at all what we were doing, right? Like we were the only ones that buy uh, the metallic linen from them and we're so disappointed because they're discontinuing it. And, and we always used it in our Janine Babic designs. Okay, I'm gonna measure. Oop, metric side. There, I'm good. I, got, I see a pin right here. Get that one out. So we're really? offering the cuddle and the flannel separately. Yes. So that way you can decide. Because sometimes when we pick the selections, um, people might want a different flannel with yeah. this cuddle and stuff. What goes with your home or decor or with the person that you're making it for. So after the, the demo here, we're going to go through all the flannels that we have and all the cuddles. And we can hold the flannels next to the cuddles to see which ones you like. But if you're in the app, on the bottom left hand corner of the app screen, uh, you'll see the word shop. If you tap on the word shop, all the flannels and cuddles that we have available will come up there so you can kind of look at them ahead of time. But we're going to go through them uh, here in a second, too. Okay. I think I'm all right. I'm going to get another pin in. Then we're going to go back to the sewing machine and we sew this down with a zigzag. So you want to make sure that your thread uh, blends in with your fur. It's, you want to make sure you have a matching bobbin, a bobbin that will uh, blend in with the fur. Double check that you have all the pins out. Okay, I think we're looking good. I'm heading over to the machine. Okay, now this time on the screen. Well, you know, there's a couple other settings that they wanted to see, too. Okay. Um, so let's go into the settings. Okay. They wanted to see where the auto down is. Okay. So here, I'm on page one. Automatic fabric sensor system, we turn that on. Okay, let's go to page two. Here it is. Automatic presser foot lift. Auto down on. Press the scissors to trim on. Now, what would happen so if I turn that off? The top one auto down means when you step on the foot control, the foot will go down and start sewing. Right. The press to trim means when you press the scissor button, the foot will lift after it's trimmed. Okay, we want that. We need that. We need that. Yes, yes we're so spoiled. So turn both of those on. There's the same setting for my, uh, same page for my dual feet adjustment. Free motion foot height, pivoting height, if you want the, let, let's just see. We have options of it lifting higher. I've never adjusted that. I just keep it at the 3.2. Some people like it to just pivot a little bit. So there are times, like if you have a fine fabric, you really don't want your foot to lift too high because uh, then your fabric might move. So you might want to adjust it so the foot only lifts 2 millimeters, but the standard is 3.2. Okay, so we're going to go with the 3.2. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so I think I'm just going to start now. First, I got to set the stitch. So we just want a regular zigzag. Okay, so I am going to select 1-09. All right, that is another one where it's going to, to tie a knot, it's going to do a zigzag. I just want a, I want a strong knot. So 1-09. Now, my width. 3.5. So I am going to keep it at 3.5. I think that's good. The length, 1.4. I'm looking at it here. Let's, I think I'd like it a little bit longer. Oh, oh, I made it shorter. Length, it's 1.4. So there I'm at 1.6. Let's take a look. I, I think I like it there at 1.8, but whatever you like, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever you like, it'll be good. Okay. Now I do like... Uh, sewing this with the quarter inch sole for the digital dual feed and I don't know what I did with mine so I think I have right over here. here maybe I got you one. Oh, you have one over there oh, well it yeah. was it's not in here okay in here. I did have it out let's see if I put it up here 
That's the stitch in the ditch. Yes, yeah, stitch in the ditch. I did have it. I must have lost it. Well, we can go ahead without it, but we'll show you the packaging. Um, I do like that foot. Yes, you found it. Steve found it. Okay. So here I'm going to, I have my foot up. So here's my foot up. I'm just going to pull down on the sole. Mm -hmm. So this is the regular sole. Okay. And then I'm going to snap on and put that one over here. And then you just bring it under and you lift up. So you lift up and you'll, you'll feel it snap into place. There, I, there. So it's up. So that's the way the educators from Baby Lock put their feet on. I never do it that way. You have the option of lowering your foot down onto it. Okay. So then, I don't know, it's just, it will guide it for me. So I just like using it. So I'm going to have that little guide on the edge of my fur. Okay. Look, this is going to get in my way. We may have to take that out as we go. So I do have my, so I'm just going to press on my foot control. I still have my knot on. And so it's going to do a knot back and forth. And then it's going to, see, it went in reverse there so i'm just following along with the edge of the fabric here i think i'll get a little closer to that safety pin see it lifted just a little bit i'm going to take this pin out so i don't bump into it and there and keep going so see i lengthened it and you think, oh, you're going to see that zigzag. Wait till you see. There's a trick to making that zigzag disappear. There. So we're going to do one side with the digital dual feed. Now, is this one going to bump? I'll make you just slide it up. I think I'll be all right. So I kind of have it set up so that it's going off the edge going to slide that pin up. I think I'll be all right. Oh, maybe not. I better take it out. I don't want it to make me go crooked. So I'll just take them out as I go. Okay. And this one, oh, I better take this one out too. Okay. Oh, I see a pin hidden. Mm -hmm. That would have been disaster. That would have meant probably a broken needle so i better i should have just gone through and just double check that i don't have any safety pins and here's another pin coming take that one out if i if i pin too far away from where i'm sewing it might shift so now here, I want to make sure that, so I'm going to stop with my foot up. This gives me a chance to tuck my fabric under, and then I keep sewing. And I'll stop with my needle down in the fabric, and I'll pivot. Okay, so pivot. I see a pin right here. I'm going to double check. I'm good. I want to make sure this is smooth. That's why you're going to have a lot of safety pins in, because you don't want that inner fabric to bubble up at all. Okay, so maybe we'll just stop at this corner, double checking no pins in there. And we'll just stop right there. So I'll just press the reverse button. I just let go. I'm not even touching my foot control. And it's going to tie a knot, go in reverse, and then it lifts my foot. Okay, so it's there. Oh, Gloria, this looks terrible. Well, you're going to take your stiletto. Okay, so I'm going to go get my stiletto and show you and I had that right here so no it's sharp and pointy I don't know I lose everything this is me I just lose everything so there you go yeah okay <laughs> all right do we have the Eleanor Burns ones uh oh we do. uh oh we do have the What's Eleanor Burns yeah the Eleanor Burns one is pretty, and it has a loop yeah. so you can put a chain on it. Okay, they're both scrambling and putting together my stilettos for me. Eleanor Burns always has a stiletto in her hands when she's sewing. 24/7. So I think hers, 
doesn't it pull out yeah hers just pulls out you don't have to unscrew it and then this fits right in okay there okay and then you just take your stiletto and you just rough up the fur that's all see disappearing so that's all you do and your stitching disappears now Eleanor Burns as she's sewing she feeds her fabric in, make sure everything's laying flat using her stiletto but Teresa from Shannon Fabrics is the one that showed us to do just rough it up and your stitching will disappear okay you got that all right now we'd like to show you the difference um, we'd like to put on the um, dynamic dual feed right uh, oh, yes D yeah. dynamic walking foot yeah dynamic walking foot mm -hmm. okay so now see Eleanor Burns it's hexagon here so it ro won't roll off okay the other one I mean do, I do like the other one too it's uh, just what you want you know okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen this screw back here and I've got my little screwdriver here and I'm gonna yeah okay he's PJ has cameras every which way now so I'm just gonna loosen it and just until I could get it off now remember it's plugged in so we are gonna unplug it okay that is your digital dual feed we absolutely love it but there's there's times I don't know that maybe the project's smaller or maybe that'll get in your way now what we need to do I'll just put my fabric over here what we need to do is oh first we have to put the adapter on so the adapter now so your machine came with the screw and the adapter but the screw wasn't in the adapter so go find your screw because this is the only time that we need this screw it might come I don't know yeah I, I, I think it's I, separate so go it, find it yeah, yeah. so like make that. sure it's yep. in maybe they do now and then okay so this see the shape okay so we need to take off this thumb screw completely like it's thumb screw because you can just turn it with your thumb it's got the okay so we're gonna slide this on so I can tell oh no this way this way so I can see that straight side and I can see on the shaft that it's straight on this side it just won't go in the wrong way and I think that's why they did that is to make sure that we didn't put that adapter on wrong okay and then here now would it have been easier to have the adapter on the walking foot that bar getting over the oh the bar, bar. yeah that, that mm, yeah. you tried okay so just so I'm just trying to get that screw to get started and it doesn't want to I'm probably not in the hole so just jiggle it around until you can feel that that screw is going in the hole Steve's gonna help me because I can't I don't want to block your view but normally I would go in from that side here good okay and I could screw it in from there if there you got go. it in yeah so I'm good here okay and I want to get that in nice and tight it's like all the way and then I'll just take my screwdriver get that in the slot and just give it one just tiny little tug just like that you don't want to screw that too tight uh, it's it's really been years since someone broke off the screw, but it, it is a possibility. Now I'm going to loosen this screw, giving it plenty of room. So turn it backwards to loosen it. And what you got to do is you have to get this on the needle bar at the same time that you get the foot around there. So I'm going to, and I don't think I'm loose enough. I need a little more room. there so there and I make sure there I did it so I've got the bar that goes up and down around my needle uh, bar and then what did I do with the screwdriver right here okay so that you'll need your screwdriver at this point so you can't get your hands in there and we'll just tighten that up I, I wish that that um, uh, creative notions 
a screwdriver would fit at this point, but I think it it's blocked. So, and even if we put the slot of the, the screwdriver slot inside and tried to do this, nope, not enough room. So this is when you'd really like to have that new uh, screwdriver that has the longer slot. Uh, the screwdriver part is a little longer on it. I'm just twirling and twirling. So really, if I get out of my seat and I go from the other angle, I'm going to make Steve do it. Go from the other angle, then it'll be easier. You want to keep going until your, your foot does not jiggle. Okay, see? It's not jiggling. If it jiggles, you don't have it in tight enough. Okay, so now... Now with this walking foot, if you've used a walking foot before and you've noticed that it's... Uh, clanky or not as smooth it's 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 the one with the plastic internal workings this one is all metal it is the smoothest walking foot i've ever sewn with i didn't really i like the way the walking foot works the levers the layers don't shift mm -hmm. but i didn't like how it sewed this one is so smooth if you if you like to use a walking foot there this one is is what do they call it dynamic it's yes. dynamic <laughs> yes yeah I, I remember when I, I read the packaging, they called it dynamic. It is. I had to go look up the definition, and it's like exceptional. And that's is, it. See, no noise. That's is this really... better than the one with the belt? No, they're they're kind of two different feet. The belt drive system is really nice, but um, but this walking foot. Sometimes people like the walking foot, uh, and they're it works really it works really well. Yeah. See how smooth it is. It's really nice. So I have the same settings. This, uh, I have it on zigzag. I have my stitch length at 1.8. And my stitch width, I kept it 3.5. I didn't feel like I needed anything different. That's the quarter inch one too. Oh, here, let's make sure I don't, okay. And I think I'll just take this pin out. So we like them both, just sometimes. This, uh, this foot works on all the baby locks, all, whether it's a low shank or a high shank. If it's a low shank, you'll just put it right on that, uh, um, what do they call that thing? The, the, the adapter? The, no, not or... the adapter. The, um, that, oh, the that, presser bar. The presser Let's bar, say. yeah. yeah. It'll go right on the presser bar. Uh, if you have a high shank machine, the bigger machines, um, like the Destiny, Altair, Solaris, uh, any of the wider throat space machines, those are normally high shank. You use the adapter, and then that foot goes right on. Nice, easy sewing. I don't have to worry too much about sewing straight because uh, the you're um, you're going to use your stiletto. So here I'm at the end. Press my reverse button. Just let go. It ties a knot, and it cuts the thread and lifts the foot. Yes. Okay, so what did I do with my stiletto right here? So let's look here so you know we can rough that up and it hides the stitches. But remember, you're gonna wanna do that on the other side too. Oh, they're kinda hidden there, aren't they? You don't really need to do it on this side. But if you want to, you can. And it just completely hides those stitches. All right, let's go look at fabric. So the other oh. thing right, right, right over here, what I wanted to show them is that this, the walking foot, uh, this one has soles that are similar to the digital dual feed that snap on and off. Now, previous walking feet that had uh, an interchangeable feet, you had to get a screwdriver out and yes. change them. And yes. we don't want to do that. No. We want them to just snap you on and off. You had to. Yeah, just so, screw it so it's separated. So this, put the new in. This universal foot just pops right All off. Right. And then this one, you just slide it underneath here. And then uh, you can just lift it up. Or let's see. Oh, my hands or even yeah. if, if you lower your foot. So I think on this one, I would lower my foot. Then I'd lift up, position it. Okay, I'm kind of off to the side here, but you guys can see whether I'm in the right spot. So I'll just position right there. it. There I am. I'm in the right spot. I just double check, and then you know you got it on if it lifts up, and it didn't. So I'm going to try just lifting up to get that on. So there. Move it forward. And me, I remember I have arthritis. There. So, okay, there we go. So, 
And that's the way the baby lock educators do it. They mm -hmm. lift it up to put it on. So this is the quarter inch, quarter inch, and then the open toe comes with it. The open toe and the universal comes with it, and then there's a separate package that includes the stitch in the ditch and the quarter inch with oh, the quilting so the bar. Open so toe we'll come and universal come with come it. Come together. Yep. Okay. We'll, we'll go, over, we'll go okay. over that too. And you know, you can see me just playing here. It's just kind of fun to fluff up your and hide your stitches. So it turns out beautiful. And we're going to show you some more of the furs and some gadgets. Okay. It's the easy project, yet it turns out so nice. So lots of tools to keep make the job easier. I have my little mini uh, vacuum cleaner, my flash vacuum cleaner here. So you want to have that handy whenever you're working with fur. We forgot about that, but I do really like it. It's so powerful. So our little flash, so we keep it handy because we're always making a mess. So to get the fuzz away. And that is uh, it's a Baby Lock product. It's actually uh, the Tacconi family who owns Baby Lock. They um, make vacuum cleaners too. Okay, this one. So this is what you see. The price in the bubble will be, you will get the two yards at 44 by 72. And then you will get this piece cut. So it is 22 and a half buy two yards 72 and so you won't be buying extra fabric and paying for extra fabric so i love this one it is teal with charcoal gray it's the color you see on your screen is exactly the color it's beautiful uh, when we embroider with like let's grab our sample there that okay. we use our snowflakes on we uh we used we went fur down Mm -hmm. Yes. We, we use metallic thread. No in, stabilizer. No stabilizer, fur down. We use mm -hmm. metallic thread on top, and mm -hmm. then we also use the metallic thread on the bobbin, and it worked perfect. Mm -hmm. So for, um, we probably used a magnetic hoop with this. Yes, I think magnetic um, hoop so we can move it around. But we did not use any stabilizer. We did not use any topper because we had it fur side down, uh -huh. and we just ran this. And we have, yeah. the, we have the pattern to come up later that we've got these snowflakes from. Where so. did we get this? You're going to show us that one. I love that. One. I, I want to make this so bad. Every year, I want to make this one. Uh, but it's got the, uh, it's got snowflakes. Looking at the package on the front, it's, it's deceiving what it is because yeah. of the tree. But it has all these great snowflakes that uh, are quilting, that can be used for quilting. Um, and it, it, so that's what we got this. And they're, uh, which snowflake do we use? Well, no, maybe this, yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't have a satin stitch one. Some makes me think we this is this for still something, in one though. of the machines. We yeah, use this we, for something, for, though. For, I think when they made one of our pillows. But you could they use that snowflakes. on this, Yeah, for sure. it's beautiful mm -hmm. quilted snowflakes. Some are, this is Amelie Scott Designs. We love her designs. And, um, and it's got just beautiful snowflakes that you could use to it quilt. Gives you blocks, corners. Right. Um, individual snowflakes yeah mm -hmm. 13 quilting designs plus the pattern for the tree quilt i every year i look at this and i want to make it i'm someday i'm going to so okay so up next is so we showed the uh we showed teal the, yes i don't want to put this one away i love it so Keep much it right there yes and then up we have the plaid cream okay so this one is cream we better leave them out because yeah. we want to match them up with the furs so i'll move this so while we're showing this why don't you kind of pick tell, out pick, tell us what which fur like. goes yeah with, well with that and we'll kind of show them at the same time so that like one really probably white and i don't think we brought out white See, I would, I would go something light. There's a, a little light, ooh, that's it, right there. The light what's, gray, because there's this a one? pin. Is that the same? That's yeah, the same. I think it's, so this one is called Wild Rabbit Silver. So that's the this is perfect with it. There's a pinstripe of uh, silver going through. Can they see that good? Oh yeah, they can. So that, that stripe right there is a gray. This is gorgeous with it. Absolutely, right? 
I don't think there's any other one I would use with it. So sold one hundred seven. Sold one hundred seven for sold the flannel. Sold one twenty three. Okay, and we'll, we'll, you know some of them I, will have more than one choice, but I think this one everyone loves this. It's like it's kind of butter colored and uh, just elegant, beautiful. All right, so let's we're, we'll put this one away because we already picked the fur, but mm -hmm. I'm going to keep this fur here. Sure. Okay. <laughs> and then okay. up next for our flannel is this one here. I love this. Yeah. So this kind of has a more masculine look. Which one is that? It's macho. I just clicked on it. Yeah. 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 So here. This yeah, this. Uh, I love it. Now, see, I would put. Okay. I, put, I, I put the other one in too. I but would put the rabbit nine iron <coughs> with this one. So it's this one here. Now here's the lighter. I, I like the lighter too. So this one I think you have more. But I kind of I like that one. So this is oh the black. Oh, the black is really nice with it. So I'll line these up here. I think maybe at this angle. No. Here. Maybe I'll lay them down. Here, the black or this nine iron. It's got shades of gray. So this one is okay. So that you have the fabric in the bubble. I okay. did have the fabric. I just put the wild rabbit nine iron in. Nine iron, and that is this one. So we can kind of lay lay a bigger piece. So there it is. So it's beautiful with that one. Really pretty shades of gray, dark to light. Same thing as the plaid, Let's dark to light. Cuddle. It's beautiful. The, the it's, black it, cuddle, I don't it's, see it. I'll put you it know, in it's not. You could use it fall and winter, all fall and winter. So it doesn't. There is not a holiday. It's not a okay, holiday. So, so the nine iron is gorgeous. The black is really nice. Yes. Right? Let's is that the one you like best, PJ? I like that one. Let's you do, like? Let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah. So here is the gray, and that's it. It's the dark. Well, not gray. It's it's black, and there's black in it. So you see the black. So that is, this is striking. All of them are. All of them are. And then the other one that you could put if you like it lighter. This um, they call this one wild rabbit silver. So here I'll hold this up in the back. So you can see, so the wild rabbits, this is what they look like. So, and then the black is the caviar this just, one. Just put in the bubble. Okay, <laughs> and that is this one. Okay, there. So that, to me, it looks like bear, black bear. So we'll slide this one aside so you can see how the black will look with it. And it's gorgeous. I love this one. I love it, love it. I love them all. I love them all. I mean, they they make, oh, hundreds of flannels, but we kind of go through and we hand pick and we make sure that we have uh, furs that go with them. So I don't know. I don't know. I like them all. So it's just a matter of taste. All three go with it. Okay, I'm going to keep these over here. So we might pull those out again. Maybe put the fabric in the bubble again in case they want that one. Okay. Yeah, so these are just, and every, uh, we've had so many guys say they would love a shirt out of this fabric, right? Mm -hmm. This would be, this, this, it's, they're 100% cotton, but they look like wool. And so these look like the Pendleton wool um, shirts. I don't even, I, I, who knows whether they still make them, but it's really, really nice quality. It doesn't wrinkle. That's what's surprising, is that it doesn't wrinkle. It's really a nice... Okay, now this one is 60 inches wide. So you're going to get two yards. So this will be 72 by 60, and you will not have to piece this one. Okay, so we'll slide this one aside. Mm -hmm. Same thing, the first one we showed, the butter color, it's, it'll be one piece. You will not have to uh, piece it. Here's another one that you don't have to piece. And this one is black and white buffalo check. And there, 
Oh, look what Steve has. This in the black. I yeah, like. the black. Okay, we'll put yeah. the black in. So here's the okay. black. I think if I have it up here, they'll have oh. more to see. And then the one Steve has is cow. Isn't it cow? Yes. Bessie. Bessie. Calf Bessie. So this is cow. And it looks great. I mean, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's really neat. If you say, no cows, I want black. The black is really nice with it. Yes, I love it. I love them all. I love them all. I don't think you can go wrong. It's just choosing what you like. How many throws are you allowed to have on your couch? You're, you're allowed to have four. One. Four. Four, yeah. <laughs> right? Or, um, one on each chair. Right. Yes. If you have a Christmas like we did last year, it it... It was so cold. How did your house hold up on that pretty Chris? Good, yeah. 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 How about your house, Steve? How did yours hold up in the with that wind and the cold? Yeah. 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 Ours didn't. Tommy and Maddie, I guess I was in Baltimore and they kept calling me. I, say, I had a pipe burst. You had a pipe burst. Yeah. It was so cold on Christmas. Coldest Christmas ever. And um, Tommy and Maddie said if you stood near our front door, uh, the door wasn't open you could see your breath in our house so and that was unusual the wind and the cold that was really unusual okay i'm going to keep the furs so you need so these just in case you haven't just put bessie in the bubble put, put bessie in the bubble okay so sold 134 for yes. bessie sold 134 is bessie and that is so cute isn't it farmers i mean this would be really cute uh, Okay, and remember this one, you do not have to piece, so it will be uh, 60 inches by 72 inches. Now this one, this is the one we did, and everyone loves this one with this um, ivory with the grays. Now this one, I would put the, we put nine iron with it. So here's the nine iron, like turn it, oh there we go, there you get a good view. Okay, then maybe the um, the silver rabbit. Let's see how that one looks. Now, see the. Oh, I like that one. You like the darker, I like Steve? This one, yeah. yeah, Steve likes the darker. He has really good taste too. I do like the darker. But you know what? The the flannel blankets in Pottery Barn they show um, they would show like the leopard print or the. Um, more like, you know, it, but I, I like our choices better. Come on, Pottery Barn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. So we we, we better, t no, I, l I, love, I yeah. love Pottery Barn. So, okay. So that's the, the irons, the, the flannel's in the bubble. The flannel is in the and bubble. The one, the nine iron. Uh, is that, that Steve says nine iron. Is that, I just put that in the bubble now. Okay, too. so there's the nine iron. But just remember, if you're in the app, on the bottom left, you can tap shop, and ever all the products we showed today are going to come up there, so you can kind of slide Wonderful. left and right to see them. So okay, I love it. We're not letting them buy on, anything and if, else. And if you're on YouTube, yeah, you have 24 people watching with <laughs> views already, and they're leaving a lot of comments. Here. There a lot of comments on YouTube. Wonderful! Yeah. Wow, that's wonderful. Thank you all so much for so, being so supportive. We really appreciate it. it you're down. you're taking us. Um, in you know the the next generation is moving in and they're making wonderful changes and uh they they're very interested in sewing they're loving embroidery just like we do we never thought they they'd do it but they're loving it so we are so excited about all of this okay so nine iron i mean you might want the silver because it is pretty with it i still like the nine iron but it is really pretty with it if you want to go with the lighter. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep these here. And, and uh, the 10% credit back is still turned on it for, is. The, for the, for the, uh, for, for today. So I was wondering, did, was it on earlier today? It yeah. was. Well, it's Black Friday it's week, Black right? Black Friday. Yes. Black Friday every day. And Black Friday every day this week. Yes. Yeah. We appreciate you. This one, I love this one. The big buffalo check. So these are, I should, here's my, 
measuring tape. I think it's two inch by two inch. Yes, it's just a little bigger than two inch by two inch. So everyone loves the black and red. Definitely, I, w I would go with the black, but also the cow looks really good. Is, is there any of the fur looks? The brown? No. The black. No. But it, Steve, Steve's got really good taste. The, this, is, so. this, is, this is nice too. But this, yeah, this it's is, cute. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Is but this is, this is elegant. Yeah, there it is. That, so there. It really is nice with it. Oh, I need to put that in the so bubble. So soft. So, uh, so now this is another one that you do not have to piece it. It will come 60 inches wide by 72. So no piecing on this flannel. This flannel is absolutely gorgeous. So I know we received lots of good comments from people after they received our flannel because I don't, it's something we've carried year after year and um, I, I've never seen it anywhere else but with us. So uh, that's good. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, Steve says black. So put the black fur in the bubble. So you, you had the black and red buffalo check. So, okay. Red, black, they're saying. What would red fur look like? Yeah. That's good. That's, it sits at the right. Oh, let's check. Okay. Yeah. See, that's that's pretty with it. Just depends on what you like. Let's get rid of the black. So, okay. So it's nice. It's it's a deep it's a deep red. So it is. This is called cardinal, I think. Oh, it's so soft. So that's nice with it. It's a shade different than the red in the blanket. So if you, you know, a lot of people don't mind that at all. They like different shades of red. They think that looks nice. So if you don't like that, the black will always go. I just put the cardinal in the bubble. Okay, so the cardinal is in the bubble. Now there are some Christmas plaids that this cardinal color will go really nice with. So, okay. Fun to make, easy to make. It's spectacular to give as a gift. Do you need to pre-shrink the flannel? We do not. It no. comes pre-shrunk for you already. Mm -hmm. And that the people from uh, the manufacturer told us that, that no, you don't have to worry about pre-shrinking. We do that for you. So, but the, like a flannel, see this is, they're woven flannels, they're not printed. So see, here's the right side, wrong side. So really, really nice quality. You're gonna love it. If you're if your garment sewer, a, a shirt, a, a tunic out of these flannels would look wonderful. I know they're showing a lot of plaids this year. Now here's another one. Now this one. I, I think this one looks good with the red and with the gray. Okay, so look at this with the red. Ooh, so I like that one. Okay, it has a charcoal gray in it. So I'm thinking the nine iron looks good with it. Okay, the, the light gray. I mean, it looks good. So I think any of those. Okay. So here, so what is the fabric in the bubble? This is another fabric that you do not have to piece. So it'll be one big piece that comes to you, 60 inches by 72. And remember, you're going to reduce that size to 53 by 66. But that'll be really easy. You'll just cut right along one of the uh, the lines of the plaid. So it, it comes to you 60 by 72 and you are going to reduce it to 53 by 66. Marilyn mentioned that the, the, um, the Cardinal isn't in, is in the app. I just want to show her where to find it right here. So okay. Right? Um, here. Yeah, we can get it as a demo screen. Okay. So on the, if you're in the app here, oh, let's turn it that way. Down here where it says shop, if you tap shop, and then just scroll th over through and then you'll find the cardinal right there. So these are all the products we've shown today. Uh, it's so awesome, isn't it? 
So. And we're, we're hoping, so go just turn on the YouTube and, uh, and let just it fall run. fall asleep to it. Fall asleep to our YouTube mm -hmm. channel. You'll dream about us. All night long. <laughs> and then we'll get enough hours that we can sell on YouTube. Yes. Right? So we put the so, flannel in. So What's really, your... seriously, do we have to have a million hours? Um, or just so you're just saying to, a figure of speech. It was something that was hundreds of thousands. Oh, but man. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. Yep. Yeah. What's your favorite cuddle for this one? My favorite. I like the red. I do like the so, red. Let's put that one. We put a cardinal right in here. I love it. Don't you? I love that. Okay. And then I like. I also like the nine iron, with the gray. I like that a lot. And then I think this lighter gray looks nice too. So here is the lighter gray. So it has light and dark going through it. Like if you separate the fur you'll see the darker gray going through see a little darker gray here so the so. cardinals in let's change to the wild rabbit nine iron so this okay. one okay so here's the wild rabbit nine iron is in the bubble right now so that looks really nice okay and then wild rabbit silver silver yes all three look nice Keep you nice and warm. Okay. While you watch movies. Gloria Horn. While you watch us on, <laughs> on YouTube. Yes. Yes, that would be wonderful. Now, this one is so striking, isn't it? So it's kind of a, a rusty red, so I would not put the red. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. So I do, I, I think black looks really good with it. Okay. Oh, the fur. This is one that the fur looks good. So what is this one? This one is wild rabbit driftwood. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, you know, the it kind of has some brown in it. The red and the brown, so that's gorgeous with it. I kind of like that better than the black. So here, we'll put that one here. And we'll put black whoop, over here. And you can see the two. So maybe if I lean that one this way and that one here, you get a good view of it. Maybe slide it this way. There we go. Okay, so it's red. So the red with the black looks really nice. But I really like the red with the fur. This is what they show at Pottery Barn. They show it really with the real fur look. And that, I think that's gorgeous with it. So winner. there's brown, and there's a little bit of brown in that red. So in the bubbles, the red plaid. Let's yes, switch to that the... Is beautiful. Um, okay. Switch to the wild rabbit... Driftwood. Oh, driftwood. There we go. And that has the uh, kind of brownish in it. There's gray, charcoal gray underneath. That is gorgeous. And then we'll put the black on there. So that that will look nice too. You like no? Like Steve's shaking his head. Like He's like, yeah. I like the you know, I, Steve has really really good taste. So, it's like there, I I love that. I I really really like that. Okay, we're good there. So the ten percent is off. off on um, on the ten. You all of this. So grab it. This is all 10% will be put back into your account to spend for later. For you to buy more stuff. For you to buy more. Get more uh, stuff I would, on I, us. I would buy a lot tonight. Our, our, they could use an if they buy a chair. The chairs are going on special this weekend, right? The koala chairs, we, uh, we're we going to do the 10% back on. And then the arrow sewing chairs that are, are such a good price, we're just going to no, sell them at the sale but, price. But they could have money in their account. They could. Yeah, you could yeah. have money in your account. And and do you do, we're allowed to now announce yet what the uh, so with the arrow chairs the cute forget uh, what the prices uh, yeah. yeah yeah so we we're not you got you got to watch us tomorrow tomorrow yeah. tomorrow you yeah. got to watch us but the kiwis are three ninety nine I'm gonna yeah. we're gonna show those every oh time my but gosh, for, the until, kiwi they're on they're only they're only in sale like that for a, a couple yeah. days out of the year now you can use your money that can put back into your account towards the kiwi. So spend a lot. Get a free kiwi. Get a free kiwi. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oops. Okay. I I really do love my kiwi. I love it. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. The family would be like, you bought a kiwi? Yeah, yes. and a sewing chair. Yes. Uh-huh. There. So here is the blue. Now uh, there, there's a dark charcoal. Like it almost looks black. Let's look at the black with it. No. Oh. What do you think, Steve? This one I like, or, the, hmm? or that, the, the silver one? Or? The silver, the silver. This one. That looks nice. The uh, the other one looked nice too. The darker one too. So, the dark gray. Okay, mm -hmm. so not black. You're thinking. Uh, it's a little harsh. Yeah, a little. He, he says. Steve says harsh. We well, don't want to be harsh. So here is. Okay, so let's. Here is. If I turn it. Oh, there we go. Nice picture. Okay, I'll put it back here a little bit. That's my top okay. pick. Okay. So, so this is your top pick. Mm -hmm. Okay, Steve's top pick. I'm gonna pull these others away. So you see it by itself. Okay, so that is the wild rabbit silver. That is really pretty. Okay, let's try the blue. Okay, so I'm gonna take this one so, away. So we have the cut we have the flannel in the bubble. Oh the flannel? Then, okay. Let's put that blue one in. The the one you have in your hand, that sorbet. We this one. It. Yeah. It's called sorbet. So let me tell you the name of it. Okay, maybe not. I think uh, it's blue sorbet. Blue sorbet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it goes light blue to a darker blue. That's pretty with it. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but Steve's top pick is the wild rabbit silver. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we'll put this one. Here is the nine iron. Oh, that's the nine iron. Okay. And that's nice too, isn't it? But it's kind of looks like it has brown in it, doesn't it? I mean, it, it would be pretty, but I think this one is better. Yeah. Yeah. Like that one. The silver is better, definitely. Yeah. Let's okay. put the silver back in. Silver in the bubble. Okay. Let's see. Okay. And then... Okay. I'll just turn that off. Three more. Okay. I think that might have been the girl from the rug fabric company. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is bone. Okay. Now, what would you put with this? <gasps> How about try the fawn? Yeah. Okay. I like it. Yeah. I like it with the fawn. Okay, so I'm going to put these over here. Hopefully, they won't block your view. And then here. Okay. Yeah, I like that together a lot. Mm -hmm. So this is fawn. There, I think that is really pretty. I, I don't think that there's another one that I would choose. Mm -mm. Uh, like, like we could put another one with it, but it's no, it's kind of like, it's it's more delicate looking, mm -hmm. like this one, oh, that way. But. No. Like my brother's house, everything is neutral yeah, and white. Neutral. And like this okay. would be good for the because that's yeah. that that uh, that neutral style. Yes. Yes. So it's the it's got the beige here. It's kind of hard to see on the screen, but this uh, fawn is is perfect so we have with the it. Bone in the bubble. So let's put the the, uh, the fabric in the bubble. The fawn, the fawn cappuccino. This is oh this is called fawn cappuccino. Uh, yep. I'm okay. Gonna, oh, it'll so take me one second. Did you find it? This is coffee. Oh, good. Um, I didn't see. It. Cuddle cup. That's it. Yes. Yep. Fawn cappuccino two yard. Yes. That's us. Cuddle cut. Yes. Okay. They did so. Um, Shannon Fabrics calls these cuddle cuts, and they all are two yard cuts, and it's like fifty nine inches wide. I love this. This is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Okay. So th did they get the fabric in the bubble? Fabric was in the bubble. Okay. Yeah. And thank you, YouTubers, for watching. <laughs> Kitch totaling up our yes. hours. We can't wait. So, okay, so that is really pretty. I'll lay this one here. Oh, I'll put that on the chair. Okay. Now what? Oh, I see a couple more. Should we keep Ooh, going? Yeah. We only have a couple more. Oh. Then this one is a 40, 
four inch wide so this one we will give you the two pieces and you'll sew it together but you saw how easy that is okay so here it's like denim blues look at how pretty with this blue now we ordered more colors so you never know what's coming okay there there's even more on the table is there any what other ones are on the table so what would you put with this one steve i'm thinking maybe a gray so oh that has blue in it this is snowy so owl maybe gray. okay so this is snow owl right snowy owl snow mm -hmm. snowy owl and it's white and there's black in there but there's navy blue in there too i kind of like that one oh steve what's your top choice i i like uh I know, I think this, this looks nice. With black, it too. okay, yeah, I think the black. So here it is with the snowy owl. So what's in the bubble right now? The right now the flannel's in the bubble. Yeah, so it's like a denim, denim blue. So here, it's beautiful. Wait, hold on. This no, one, oh, we oh, will have the two pieces indigo, cut for you, and you'll match the plaid. Okay, and this one, the next one so is I the Snowy Owl. I think that the people who just put 114 in their cart with the blue, I think I had the, the wrong, I think this is what was in the, was in the oh, bubble. Oh, okay. Yes, so, so that blue is 114. What this is this is one? This is 116. 116 is this blue. So, okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So this is the one you want. This is not 114. I, I, that was my fault. Yeah, so this is 116 if you want this one. And I do like it with the snowy owl. I do. I love it. But then here, this is like more striking. So there is black in there and the black looks really nice with it. So go this way. Put your hand in. Yeah, there you oh, go. Okay, there we go. Okay. So here, I'm going to, oh, I'll move the black in by itself. Oop, this way. And so he has me put my hand in because the camera focuses on skin color, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then you get more accurate colors. Uh, can you put the blue sorbet next to it, please? Yes, okay. So here, and the blue sorbet. Okay, right here. So do a zoomed in one on that one okay. again. Yeah, is this one in your way? Yeah, the, there. The, the, uh, that's not blue sorbet. Yeah. That oh, one blue goes. sorbet. Oh, <laughs> there blue we go. sorbet. Yeah. So that blue is in here. Okay, so there's the blue sorbet there. My hand in. Fix that. We're gonna fix that. So yeah. that it doesn't shift or anything. I didn't even see it, it shift. It does shift, so take your hands out, watch it. Okay. Shift. If so anything the goes the color shifts? If anything goes bit. to wait list while we're here, uh don't not to worry. Um I'm actively fixing that and ordering as as we go right now, so yeah, Don't, he yeah. is placing orders as as you are ordering things, so he's a multitasker, right? We, we are a building full of multitaskers, aren't we? Yes. That's what people remark is that uh, people whisk by all day long and it's they're, they're trying to get as many packages shipped, as many kits made. It's wonderful. Thank you all so much. Okay, so we're good there. And then I think there's, oh, there's, there's the Christmas plaid. Oh, we still have a couple more to go. A couple more to, couple go, more to go, and I love this This is cuddle one. day, flannel day, yeah. so we're going to show we're them all. we're waiting for the navy cuddle to come in. Yeah. So navy, uh, some people have ordered it, and we're waiting for it to come. I'm going to have to call them. That's but this is beautiful. It's black watch plaid. So are you thinking black? Yep, that's that one. Oh, no, not black. that one there. Oh, that one of fur. Yeah. Okay. There. Okay. So the fur looks nice with it. So this one is the wild rabbit driftwood. That looks beautiful with it. So it'll have that fur look with the black watch plaid. It's one of my favorite. It's, it's very, I'm seeing this in fashion uh, right now. So, uh, 
uh, you're seeing a lot of black watch plaid garments for sale in the store, so it's very popular right now. Okay. And, was, uh, and this will come to you in two pieces, so, so it will be the 44 by 72 and then a 22 and a half by 72, and you'll match the plaid. Okay. Now come the Christmas. And I, I, I smile when I say that because I always search for Chris, Christmas plaids and I wasn't able to find the quality that we liked. And these are really, really nice quality. So, this is, um, now any of the tartans. furs will look good with this, right? Look how nice this one looks with it. Let, let's try the red. Oops, there goes my ruler. So there's the red. This is the wild rabbit driftwood. I think that looks nice. The what other one? Should we try one of the grays? I don't. I don't. I'm not liking the grays. I'm liking these two. I like this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you like this nice one. Too. Yeah. So how about the the dark? No. I don't. Well, it's nice. Look at it. Mm -hmm. That's nice too. Okay. That's the wild rabbit driftwood. So the cardinal nine iron nine iron oh driftwood driftwood and this one has brown. What's your favorite, Steve? Driftwood. Driftwood. The driftwood. This one. Okay. Oh. So let's take the red one away. And yeah. Oh, that's here. good right there. Yeah. Yeah. So right there. That is. Yeah. I let. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, we can do that too. Um, the red is a little different shade of red. It looks nice with it, but it's a deep the the fur is a deeper red than the red that's in the plaid. It looks really nice though. So, okay. And Patsy, yes, we take special requests. So yes. here is the uh, teal flannel again. Okay. Let's put this down with the mallard. Yes. And that is really pretty. That's how I'll unroll this a little bit. Okay. There. What do you think, Steve? I'm I'm seeing a little bit of green. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that okay with you? Like what what color would you put with it? Let's see. I kinda like that one with it. Yeah. Here we'll put that one right there. Okay. Yeah, I like both of them. Mm -hmm. Just depends if you're a, a, you like the color. It is a beautiful color. It's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And this wild rabbit Driftwood is perfect with it too. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. So, I love this teal. Okay, here comes a Christmas, another Christmas. Okay, now see this one is here. Oh, running, out, running out of room. Green Christmas. Green, yep. Now, let's see. So the red, I think, looks nice with it. It's that hunter green and the red. I really like that. But I think any of the furs would go with it. So let's see. Here, this, too dark, no good. I think the one, this one, mm -hmm. is really nice with it. Yeah. So Steve, you have to give us your opinion. I like the, the driftwood. This one, yeah. wild rabbit driftwood. Here's fawn with it. No. Well, I mean, I like it. I like the red. I like the driftwood. And the, the this one goes with it, too. But I kind of like this one. I, I like I'm I'm with Steve. I just listen to so Steve because everything what, he picks this is This is good. what we did when we picked the cut, the kits for you guys. With it. We're like, oh, this one, no, that one, then this one. So like this way, if there's one you really like to put them together, you can definitely do that. Because trust yeah. me, we labored over this yeah. when we did them yeah. for you guys before. Uh, so we had everyone involved. But then picking I these saw out. this last time. Uh, they bought like uh, somebody bought like four kits, and she changed 
what she put with it and it ended up looking really really nice so okay and then another gorgeous christmas plaid this red one. tartan red tartan and of tartans there. this is beautiful so okay yeah there's that wild rabbit driftwood again okay i think that looks nice with it not this one okay let's try the the darker okay there's a little bit of black in it okay there's the we, gotta do the, we haven't gotten ooh. a leopard in with anything no uh-uh so there how about black There is a little bit of black going through. So, yeah, I like it. There is definitely black going through. Okay, so leave it, leave the camera there. I'm gonna switch to different furs. Okay. So there's the black. Here's the wild rabbit driftwood, which is nice. Nine iron. Uh, oh, nine iron. Driftwood. Oh. Steve, you gotta keep me. I'll keep. We'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. We'll you keep you in order here. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. So, so there is the driftwood. Which one do you like best with it? I, I don't think the red. I, I felt like the black was really striking. You, you like the leopard? You know what? We haven't used the leopard in anything yet, and I think this goes the best with the leopard. Almost, I feel like for some reason, because of this little bit of gold in here. Yeah. Stuff, but if you want to go wild, you could do the leopard. Right, go this wild. This is a Joni throw. Yeah, yeah. Because uh -huh. <laughs> Joni's the she's she our wears leopard. leopard. Yeah. She's the only one here that can pull it off. I mm -hmm. feel like. Yeah. And but... I show you. I try to wear leopard, and I look ridiculous. Oh, here. Put it just in there. doesn't go with. We're me. gonna put you in leopard one day. <laughs> I did. I bought a leopard top one time, oh, I and I wore okay. it, and it was no, no leopard for me. Okay, so I here's the, like the leopard. There, I do too. So I like the leopard. I really like that. And then this one, the driftwood. Okay, I'll put the driftwood in front. I kind of like that. This way. Okay, or. The leopard. Put that one there, there, and you can see both of them. I don't know. I do like the leopard with that one. Okay. The yellow with the leopard. This. So this, I know this is a lot to show you, but we want to show you the whole selection. So. Oh. This one with the leopard. The, let's try that. Yeah. So there, with the leopard. Ooh. That's that. really mm -hmm. pretty. Yes, that is pretty. So what did we say before? The fawn. The fawn. Okay, so is it this side? And you can see. I saw the color change, Fuji, on it. Yeah, 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 that time it, it did. So if your hand is in there, the color changes back? Yeah, I'll fix that for you. Yeah, you okay. Hand model the whole time. Okay. But. Aren't we... Uh, we're so happy he came with yes, us. Yes, we have red fur too. It's the cardinal. Yes, Cardinal Card was one, sold one thirty three. Cardinal, okay. Yep, and uh, I think there's just one more flannel here. Okay. One more. This one here. Red Christmas. Red Christmas. Yep. The red. I think I would go with one of the furs. The driftwood. Yeah, driftwood. Right okay, wait right here. Okay. Here's the driftwood with it. Right here. Yeah, that's good. I, uh, that I love. The red is just not the right shade of red. The driftwood. I like this one with it too. Yeah, try that one. Mm, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is fun shopping with you. Yes. <laughs> All right. How about gadgets? We had some gadgets. So or do you have, think we uh, kept them long enough? Two days yeah. before Thanksgiving? Yeah. Which is probably good, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we, we this so that we're fine. We're yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, tomorrow, you never know if we're going to pop on with another, um, because 
another technique like I I want to show you the octagon and people are saying we n we didn't do a Christmas octagon <gasps> so I, I'll do that we I keep saying Thursday but we may pop on early on in Thursday, the day tomorrow we might pop on. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but definitely Kathy is gonna go on uh, tomorrow at one o'clock because I'm sure everybody here is going to want to go home at 3 uh, to go get ready for Thanksgiving. So 1 o'clock tomorrow. You never know. We may pop on at 11. I would love to do an octagon demo. So we'll see how we do. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us at Gloria Horn Sewing Studio. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for your support. We are loving all of this. Yes. And thank you. Thank you. We're yep. going to continue with our free videos. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.